Why do 100,000-mile flyers choose United? When I invented the Hobie Cat, I helped a lot more people to enjoy the coast of California. Now United does the same thing, with more flights to the West Coast than any other airline. United flies to 30 cities in the West every day, including L.A. and San Francisco. With all this service, plus advanced check-in, United makes doing business in California a real pleasure. Carl Haas, Budweiser Racing Team roars into the championship racing series. This for you. Oh, all you do. The king of is coming through. And at the wheel, Mario and Betty. They're coming your way, and they're playing to win. Oh, all you do. This Bud's for you. don't need a reminder but there's still one big three game homestand remaining as the Pirates continue to battle for the Eastern Division Championship George Foster and the Mets in Pittsburgh Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday nights the 27th 28th and 29th game time each night is 735 why not give the Pirate ticket office a call at 323-1150 right now reserve your tickets on Visa MasterCard or American Express for what could be the most crucial three game series of the year in Three Rivers the Mets and the Bucks 1983's final regular season homestand at Three Rivers Stadium the brain trust of the Pirates bottom of the sixth inning coming up Al Monchek working on the lineup card also talking on the two way upstairs to traveling secretary Charlie Muse as they set the defense here at the bottom of the sixth inning. will lead it off. He's 0 for 1. Batting 299. Started the night as the number 10 batter in the National League. The Expos with three batters in the top 10. The Pirates have the number one batter. But Bill Madlock's really been limited since the early part of September. Fly ball left field. Eastler with a long run to the line. Gets there in time and hauls it down. Isn't it interesting to see Atlanta with all of those well stars really led by Andre Dawson but you talk about the hitters in the top 10 the pitchers that have that have done the job and you can't understand why I mean and even the defense with the addition of a Manny trio the defense has even gotten better I get you know it would almost seem that John that they must do everything at the same time and then go through stretches where nobody does anything that's a good point Brian Little batting 245 breaking pitch down low Brian shows but he likes to do that he's over two tonight Popped to short and bounced to Jason Thompson. He's an excellent bunner. He has something like, I don't know, 20, 22 base hits by bunning. Ground ball to Jason Thompson on one hop. Jason makes the play alone, and for the second time in a row, he retires Brian Little. Since giving up the run and the hit in the first inning, Rick Roden has allowed only one base runner. That was Warren Cromarty, who walked in the fifth inning. So Rick has been tough since the first. Started out like he might not get the ball over tonight. He walked Tim Raines to start the ball game, the bottom of the first. Went to 3 and 0 on Brian Little, but came back to get him. Dawson has struck out twice. Broden has three in the game. The other one was Tim Wallach. Throws ball one to Andre Dawson. Andre batting 308. 0 for 2 tonight. 111 RBIs. Go! Go! You know, you might want to care, compare. Here's Doug Harvey. He was having some problems with the Pirates. But he's smiling now. Two balls, no strikes. Foul back. What I wanted to say, John, was Andre Dawson and... Dale Murphy you kind of put them both in the same category as being team leaders and really trying to carry their ball club because Dawson uh, you take Dawson Oliver and Tim Wallach who have really put the numbers on the board this year and you add range to that as far as generating some offense but some holes in their lineup for Atlanta it's been Dale Murphy pretty much by himself now with Horner out Shambliss has been in and out of the lineup so these guys that can carry a club have done it most of the year, but right now it has to be wearing on them, and, and it shows in Dawson's case because he just it doesn't seem like he has that real quickness in his bat at the moment. Three balls, one strike. 
Roden walks his third man. A two out walk to Andre Dawson. We'll bring Al Oliver to the play. You know, Dawson with 32 home runs, that's an all time single season high for him. His previous best, 78 and 79, when he hit 25 in each season. And look at this ballpark that is a pitcher's park more than a hitter's park because it's a big one. So that tells you something that Dawson can hit him out of anywhere, put him in another ballpark, and he might even hit somewhere around 40. And I would say someday he probably will. Al Oliver, one for two, triple to drive in the only Montreal run in the first. It is six to one, the Pirates lead. Line drive to Richie Hebner. The inning is over. That's it. A walk, a man left, no run. Seventh inning is coming up. Johnny Ray, Dave Parker, Jason Thompson do up for the Pirates, the Bucks, And Rick Roden leading by five as we go to the seventh. What's your money done for you lately? Is it working as hard as you are? Well, in a Signal Finance five-year investment certificate, the money you work for can work for you at this guaranteed rate, earning this compound yield. That means $500 becomes this, and $5,000 this. So when you're ready to put your money to work, call this number and get these numbers for five years from Signal Finance Corporation, where your money matters. Looking for a great deal on a 1984 automobile? You could be lucky, or you can get smart and consult your Cadillac consultants. They'll show you just how affordable owning an 84 Cadillac could be, like the stylish Seville, the Eldorado, first in personal luxury, the sporty Cimarron, and setting a new standard in performance, the Cadillac Fleetwood. With new standard and available features, the 84 Cadillacs are better than ever, and they're all affordably priced at your Cadillac consultants, where the smartest new car buys are made. Navy fighter pilots on a supersonic mission, ironing your wrinkles away, and the movers and shakers behind Monday Night Football, Monday on Evening Magazine. Patty Burns and Ray Tannehill, tonight at 11. Seventh inning coming up, and the next three are sponsored in part by your local McDonald's restaurant. It just takes two, McDonald's and you. By your local Pepsi-Cola bottler, who invites you to take the Pepsi Challenge. And by your locally owned and operated Amco transmission shops. Totals after six for the Pirates. Six runs, seven hits, no errors. One, one, and one for Montreal. Johnny Ray started out with a breaking pitch, takes it for a strike. Johnny batting 227 as a right handed batter this year. He is one for two officially tonight. Singled and scored a run in the five run Pirate first. Terry Tatum will, or rather, Frank Pulley will work on home plate. No balls and two strikes to Jay Ray. He's in a hole. Two strikes. KDKA with us tonight, as always, our flagship station, WJAC TV in Johnstown, Altoona. Johnny Ray is down on strikes. Doesn't happen often, but he got him on strikes. First strikeout for Schatzeter, third strikeout of a pirate in the game, one out. Also, WDTV in Clarksburg, West and West Virginia, and WSEE in Erie. Thanks to all of our network st stations for a great 1983 season. Hope to see you back in 84. Dave Parker up. Our program is authorized under television rights granted by the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club Incorporated and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the expressed written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates is prohibited. Swing and a miss by Dave. The Cobra is 0 for 3. Struck out in the first, flied to left in the second, and grounded out in the fifth inning. A weak roller back to the pitchers last time up. Dave, 18 for 64 against Montreal pitching this year. There's a base hit to right. Parker gets his first hit of the night. Hit number eight for the Bucks. Second hit off Schatzeter. A one out single for Dave in the top of the seventh. That will bring up Jason Thompson. 
Jason with a two out single his last time up to drive in Marvell win for the sixth pirate run. Jason one for two with a walk. That was a pretty good picture there at first base Al Oliver and Dave Parker. What if you put all of their numbers together you'd be talking about them for a week. Side to Jason. Good news from St. Louis. Want to hear it? Yeah, I'd like some good news from St. Louis. Cardinals scored two in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's tied at two. David Green hit a home run, a two run shot to tie it. One ball and one strike to Thompson. One out, one on. We're at the top of the seventh. Pirates lead it six to one. Montreal with just one hit in the ball game. That was a first inning triple by Al Oliver to drive in a run. Parker with his first hit of the night is the runner at first. Schatzer catches the corner one and two. Dan is the third pitcher for Montreal. Sanderson went the first two innings gave up five runs. All of them came in the first inning and two home runs. Welsh went two and two thirds. He gave up the sixth run. running Thompson hits it just foul outside of third Dave was on the move on the one two pitch he'll go back and do it all over again Jason I believe broke his bat too Let's go some new lumber for JT Six one pirate lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Oliver holding Parker on. Al Monchek, the coach at first. Schatzer started with Montreal, first came to the big leagues in 1977, went to Detroit in 80 and 81. Quick move to first. Ball gets away from Oliver. Parker's going to try to go to second. Oliver's throw is not in time, and it's real high again. Almost threw it away again. Well, that'll be an error on Schatzeter because of the throw being in the dirt. Now, if you watch Dave Parker, first a throw that's in the dirt. Well, it didn't go in the dirt. Oliver should have made the play there. Dave started to run, then he stopped, and then realized the ball was going to be far enough away, plus the fact that Al does not throw all that well and a little bit of a decoy there but they gave shots at her the air and it should have been on Oliver he made the throw he made the move flat footed in an attempt to get Parker second error of the game for Montreal the first one helped the Pirates out let's see what happens this time Marvell Wynn was picked off in the fifth inning made it to second on a throwing error by Oliver and Thompson drove him in Jason takes high this time two and two. You know that that play happened so quick I thought that he did throw it in the dirt but the replay showed that scoop should have caught the ball. There you see that that's a kind of a. You know, different looking first baseman's glove it almost looks like a catcher's mitt. Full count of three and two on Jason Thompson one out Parker at second Pirates trying to add to a six one lead. Bluffs a start. Thompson hit number 1,000 to center field. Parker around third. Here comes the throw from Andre Dawson. They've got a shot at him, but they miss. Pirates lead it 7 to 1. Thompson, who gets his 1,000th major league hit, winds up at second base. Well, let's watch it again. He got his last hit in the fifth inning up the middle. Does the same thing here in about the identical place, the same kind of a pitch. So that's good news. The fact that he gets not only his 1,000th hit, but maybe a number at this part of the year that's a little more important. It seems that Jason is starting to drive in some more runs right when you need him the most. Well, the other good news is both of those RBI singles coming against left-handed pitchers. Parker scores the run. Again, the error helped to set it up. Thompson at second. Mike Eastler is the batter. 
Mike is two for three tonight. Grand slam home run in the first, single in the fifth. Seven to one, the Bucks on top. Good curveball for a strike. Last time up, you remember Mike hit that ball into left field. Now let's see what Shatsitter tries to do. Will he change his pattern and adjustments that you make? See if Mike has to make any. Same pitch. Two pretty good breaking balls right there. No balls, two strikes, one out. Thompson at second. Give him a single and an RBI. He goes to second on the throw to the plate. Now let's see if he goes to the well too often. Came with a heater that time. Yep. Good hitters will get caught with some good pitches, John, but after they've seen him a couple of times, and you might have to change a little bit. The hitter will say, you can get me once and twice, but don't try it again. There you see Jason at second. Wouldn't be surprised to see the breaking pitch here, though. Nope, came with a fastball, fouled it off. Still one and two. Anytime you have two strikes, it's better to look for the fastball and adjust to the curveball. That's what hitters will do, because if you look for the off-speed pitch and all of a sudden the fastball is there, you can't pull the trigger. It's too late. Pirates have nine hits. Ground ball to second. Thompson will move to third. Eastler is out at first. So two outs here in the seventh inning. Pena will make his way to home plate and try to add to the Pirate lead. It is seven to one. Philadelphia St. Louis, remember, tied 2-2. They played four in Bush Stadium. They will walk Tony Pena. First walk by Schatzeter, who has allowed three hits. And one run so far. With the Cardinals, by the way, playing Philadelphia tonight, you know, Philly's playing a doubleheader here last night, John, and then having to fly to St. Louis. It had to be a almost like an all-nighter for the Phillies. They really need Steve Carlton to pitch a low-run game. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Philly bats a little bit sluggish tonight. Well, of course, after the doubleheader sweep last night, I'm sure they could have gotten to St. Louis without a plane. They were probably sky high. <laughs> That's possible. why they call it the grind. It grinds down to the end of the year and the teams that are the strongest are the ones that win. And with bench strength like Richie Hebner playing tonight for Bill Madlock again. Richie was hit by a pitch his last time up. in his last 15 games coming into tonight takes outside the count one and one with two outs Thompson the runner at third Jason with a single up the middle to drive in Parker Pena intentionally walked the Bucks got five in the first one in the fifth and one more here in the seventh Hefner fouls it back it's one and two John Candelaria against Bryn Smith. It'll be a 220 game. Lanny and Rook will be on the radio. Hebner goes the other way and makes it pay off. A base hit to left. Thompson scores. Pena will stop at second. So they walk Pena to get to the hack and he drives in the run. Richie goes the other way. We talked about adjustments. Watch this pitch by Schatzeter. It's not a bad one. Breaking ball away, and look at Hack. Off his front foot, and just flips the ball down the left field line. That's a case of good hitting right there. There's, there's uh, nothing you can do about it. When you're the pitcher, and they want the breaking ball away, that's what Schatzeter threw. Hebner comes through with a hit. So in his last nine games, Richie has now driven in 12, excuse me, his last 15 games he's driven in 12 runs. He has really done an amazing job coming off the bench. Shatzer 
Carter is through for the evening. And right-hander Craig Barger coming on. Bill Burt still has a smile on his face. Chancellor gets credit for two innings. Four hits, one strikeout, one walk. A hit batsman, two runs so far. Mills will take over at first, so it's another two-for-one change. Brad Mills will be the first baseman. So you can put Mills in the number five spot in the order where Schatziner was. He will lead off the seventh inning. And back the pitcher up and put Barger in the number four spot in all Oliver's spot. Okay, we can do that if we want to, right, Brook? Whatever. Okay, Barger I coming. He's going to say I was wait till they bat. I, I got caught already a couple of times. Barger coming on for the seventh time, two and always record. He has a 7.64 earned run average. And he spent the year in Double A AA and Triple A this year. Combined was 10 and six at Memphis and Wichita. Barger was recalled. July the 14th. Well, Chuck Tanner stayed with his left-handed batting lineup against the two left-handed relievers, and it's paid off. We're in the seventh inning. The Pirates sitting on an eight-to-one lead. The Bucks now have ten hits in the ball game. They've scored two more here in the seventh. Thompson with an RBI and Richie Hebner. They walked Tony Pena to get to the left-hander, and Richie made him pay for it with a base hit. Here's Dale Barra now. Dale is one for three. Singled his last time up. Pena is the runner at second, Hebner at first. Barra hits a little looper into a short right field. Little is there, side retired. The Pirates had two more on three hits. Toss in a walk in the inning. Bottom of the seventh for Montreal. It will be Mills, Francona, and Salazar. Oh, the Expos have a lot to talk about. They're down by seven. Take off on an exciting Walt Disney World adventure from your passport station, WTAE Radio. You'll fly Eastern, the official airline of Walt Disney World, to a vacation paradise filled with Magic Kingdom adventures. Plus, you'll experience Epcot Center, the billion-dollar showplace that takes you into the future and around the world. Hi, this is Jack Bogan. Find out how you can play and win by listening to WTAE Radio, your passport to the Walt Disney World adventure. A basic principle. McDonald's has never lowered a single quality standard for the sake of a low price, and never will. That is the cornerstone of McDonald's success. 100% pure domestic American beef. Not one ounce is imported. Fresh eggs, U.S. grade A, large. Nothing but the best. Maybe you never knew it, but you've always tasted it. Hard work. That's what it takes to build your own business. It also takes money and plenty of initiative. At Equibank, we know it also takes a partner to help you achieve your goal. One with expertise you can depend on. One with the resources for growth. One with the flexibility to meet your needs. It takes time and effort to be successful and a bank that comes through when you need it most. Equibank, we deliver. to Olympic Stadium in Montreal. First thing we're going to do before we start the bottom of the seventh is step out for five seconds as our network stations identify themselves on the Pirate Television Network. KDK TV2 Pittsburgh. Brad Mills will lead it off. Brad is now the first baseman. We're trying to keep up with the changes. Called strike to Mills. Batting 231 on the year, does not have a homer. One RBI. Hits it to left field. No trouble for the hit man as he puts it away. One out of the seventh. 
You know, since that first inning, Roden is pitching a very tidy kind of a game, John. He's really rolling along. Terry Francona fly to right and grounded out. Made the defensive play of the game in the first inning. Hits a one hopper to the second baseman, Johnny Ray. And quickly, two outs in the seventh. Attendance tonight, 37,115. Including the two fellows with bags over their heads. And some of the folks are going to head home. They've seen enough, I guess. Salazar, the batter. Argena Salazar takes ball one. His average is 167. Takes a strike. By the way, they snuck in Doug Froble on us in right field. Well, why would they do that? Give Dave a rest. I reckon. Down the right field line, that'll get in the seats. So Doug Froble in the lineup for Dave Parker. Parker. There he is. One for four tonight. There's Doug. It all started for him right here this year. He was called up from Hawaii. Joined the team in Montreal. And he is from Canada. Salazar. Base hit up the middle. First hit for Montreal since the first inning. Two out single by Salazar. Bobby Ramos takes outside ball one. Bobby in the game is 0 for 2. It's the bottom of the seventh here in Olympic Stadium. The Pirates lead it eight to one. Ten hits for the Bucks, two for the Expos, a couple of errors for Montreal. Swing and a miss. Two and one. That is the first base hit since the first inning, and we're in the seventh. Roden has allowed two. Rick trying to win for the 12th time in 1983. There's a ground ball. That will get through. Salazar stops at second. Back-to-back -back two out singles for the Expos here in the seventh inning. Usually when you get into this point in the game and having the kind of a lead that Roden has at seven runs, you pitch four outs, and you just, you don't, you're not quite as sharp, I guess. Now watch this. Not a bad pitch right there. A fastball tailing back over the outside plate, and Ramos hit it right on the end of the bat. There you see Rick pointing at the ball after it got beyond second base. But, you know, getting the five runs right off the bat like that, John, sometimes a little more difficult to maintain your concentration. You almost have to make yourself think it's a one to nothing game. Chris Spire batting 258. Chris came on in the fifth inning. Takes ball one. Runners at first and second with two outs in the seventh for Montreal. Spire is batting in the number nine spot in the order. Salazar at second and Ramos at first. Caught the corner, one and one. Chris did not agree. In his own little way. <laughs> <laughs> The Expos came into this game with a team batting average of 266, just ahead of the Pirates, who as a team were batting 264 through 153 games. That's a strike. One and two with two outs. Doug Harvey. 
So it's two balls and two strikes. Spire is 0 for 2 since coming on. Let's check it. He's 0 for 1. Fly to center in the fifth inning. It'll go full at 3 and 2. I don't want to say it. Well, it's not good news from St. Louis. The Phillies with a three spot in the top of the fifth inning. Five to two. Philadelphia moves out in front of the Cardinals. Now, Rick, really all you can do is just keep winning. That's right. Worry about your own game. Spire high fly ball left field. Mike Eastley. Puts away the final out. A couple of hits, but no runs in the seventh and the Pirate eighth. Roden will lead it off, then Marvell Wynn and Johnny Ray. The Bucks as we go to the eighth, leading by seven. This Bud's for everyone who takes the power and sends it down the line. This Bud's for you. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. Smooth. Smoother. Have you tasted Mountain Dew lately? Now Mountain Dew is smoother than smooth. So you ought to taste it now. Do it, do it. Let's go see the Bucks in 1984. You know, it's not too early to order your 1984 Pirate season tickets. It's a great way to entertain your family, your clients, and your friends all summer long. And the Pirates have a season ticket plan to suit your needs at affordable prices. There's sure to be plenty of thrills and excitement at Three Rivers in 84. So why not call 323-5028 and ask for further details on Pirate season tickets and come and see the Bucks in 1984. Remember the number, 323-5028. And remember the number, it's $800. And Giant Eagle Groceries on the line for Teresa Falcone of Pittsburgh. No, it's Falcone of Pittsburgh here in the top of the eighth inning. If a pirate hits a home run, Teresa will pick up $800 in Giant Eagle Groceries, plus certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free. I guarantee you, Rook, we're going to have a winner this inning, no matter what, okay? All right. Rick Roden leads it off. Rick is 0 for 3. He's flied out three times. The last time he flied to left in the Expos turned that into a double play when Richie Hebner attempted to tag up and go to third after the catch. He was thrown out. That last time up, Roden got a good fastball, Johnny. Just got under it, so he's overdue. Let's see Rick go long ball here. <laughs> and then again, maybe we won't. And then again, <laughs> maybe we won't. All right. <laughs> one and one on Rick. Pirates leading eight to one. Scored five times in the first. Grand slam homer by Mike Eastler, followed by a solo home run by Tony Pena. RBI single for Jason Thompson in the fifth. RBI singles by Thompson and Hebner in the seventh. Back to the screen. <laughs> Look at Bobby Ramos, the catcher. He's looking at Barger like. What was that? What, what, what was that? Did I mess up or did you mess up? There's the catcher. <laughs> kind of a inquisitive look. Well, if he does it again, he'll get a look like if you do it again, I'm going to punch your lights out, right? Not or let Frank Pulley do it. <laughs> Teresa Falcioni of Pittsburgh is our Giant Eagle jackpot contestant, $800 on the line. Roden ground ball to the right side. Oliver kicks it, and Roden's going to be safe. But it's not Oliver. It's Brad Mills at first who kicks it. Al had his problems, but we don't want to charge him with that error. Brad Mills. You know, Mills has plenty of time here on this ball. And watch the short hop. It looks like it takes a wicked hop right here, right there. It's an in-between hop. 
And Mills, now he stops. I think he feels that Barger is going to pick the ball up and hopefully flip it to him. Look where Rick is. He was still down the line. Roden does not run that well. And there's Brad Mills. Right now, he'd like to maybe hide a little bit, say, get that camera off me. Third error in the game by Montreal. And he just looked at Roden and said, they should have given you a base hit on that one. <laughs> Well, if it had hit him in the chest instead of the glove, it might have dropped down enough that he could have gotten the ball back. But it hit off the heel of his glove. Yeah, it hit him in a bad spot. His right, glove, right? <laughs> in the glove. Marvell win. One for three tonight. He scored two runs. He was on base when Mike Eichler hit that grand slam in the first. And Jason Thompson chased him home in the fifth inning. Thompson with two RBIs. Eichler with four. One for Hebner and one for Pena tonight. Eight runs, ten hits for the Pirates. One run, three hits for Montreal. Roden takes the lead. The Expos will not hold him on. Marvell drives it into center field. Dawson able to catch up with it. One out. Baseball can do the things that Dawson can do when it comes to doing it all. He'll beat you in every way possible. Here's Johnny Ray. One for three tonight. Singled and scored in the first. Struck out his last time up. Batting 277. It's right where he started the night. change in the infield for Montreal. Brad Mills we mentioned is now at first. Brian Little is at second. He's the only one who started the game who's still in the infield. Agena Salazar is playing short and Chris Spire is at third. Roden will go back to first. It's one and one on the batter. Johnny Ray. Johnny has ten hits against Montreal this year. Speed pitch right there. Barger for a rookie appears to be poised enough, John. It looks like he has good movement on all of his pitches. This pretty good tailing fastball. His breaking ball, it seems like that is not what he's getting over. Of course, he just got out there. Ray fouls it back. Check it. Ray has 20 hits against Montreal this year. He's batting over 300 against the Expos. You can see how the Montreal defense is playing it. Bunch towards second, looking for the double play to get out of the inning. A lot of room down the third base line. Johnny pops it up. Bobby Ramos back toward the screen, runs it down. Two outs. We've had some Giant Eagle winners this year. Maureen Zubrad of Oakdale won $1,500. Basil Blumet of Pittsburgh, $1,100. Marge Mattis was our big winner for the year, $5,300 in Giant Eagle Groceries. Fran Pusateri of Pittsburgh, $100. Florence Crusen, $800. Ellen Einat, $2,200. And A.L. Thomas, $1,100. Froebel, base hit up the middle. Roden stops at second. Two on with two out. Well, Doug will be happy about that. There he is. That's his first time up since coming on in right field, and I'm sure he has a lot of family and friends here. He looks cold, doesn't he? <laughs> Bullpen still right going. Hitter. That's Tom Dixon, number 37. Hit number 11 for the Pirates. Montreal has committed three errors in this game. We're in the top half of inning number eight. First game of a three-game series. Here's Jason Thompson. Jason is two for three tonight. He scored two runs and driven two in. Also picking up, and our congratulations to him, hit number 1,000 of his major league career. Teresa Falcioni of Pittsburgh is our Giant Eagle jackpot contestant. That's up high to JT. Down the 
down the third baseline in foul territory he's out no home run in our giant eagle jackpot inning for Teresa Falcioni we have certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi free but we also had a special drawing and since it is our last regularly scheduled game Chester L Smith of Pittsburgh is the winner of eight hundred dollars in Giant Eagle groceries to close out our account for 1983 Chester Smith you get the eight hundred dollars Teresa Falcioni gets the 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi free the Pirates do not score in the eighth inning for Montreal top of the order coming up the Bucks lead it eight to one. What's a dinner at Bob Evans without our great taste in sausage? Well, it's delicious boneless barbecued ribs. It's golden breast of chicken or hot chicken and noodles. And it's farm-raised catfish, all served with dinner rolls made from scratch. So what's a dinner at Bob Evans without our great taste in sausage? Great taste in Bring me back to good old I bet you really miss Danny, huh, Mary Lou? It's been almost a year. Exactly. You said the ship's over in Italy someplace? Mm -hmm. In the Mediterranean, I think. Well, I bet he won't be home till Christmas for sure. Or even later. <laughs> Will you be glad to see him? I sure. Danny! In my hometown, there's just nothing like a get-together at Pizza Hut. Oh, guys, why didn't somebody tell me? At your hometown <laughs> pizza, huh? Ready to go on the bottom half of inning number eight. The Pirates leading eight to one here on Olympic Stadium. The Bucks have 11 hits. The Expos have three. The Pirates scored five times in the first inning. Mike Eastler with a grand slam. Tony Pena a home run in that inning. Added one more in the fifth. Two more in the seventh. Eight to one. And under our contractual arrangements, the announcers for this telecast have been selected by station KDKA TV, subject to the approval of the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club, Incorporated. Roden has given up just three hits. Rain scored the lone Montreal run back in the first inning. He walked, stole second, and came home on a triple by Al Oliver. Since then, he's grounded out and flied out. 298 is batting average. Tim fouls it away. Now with 84 stolen bases. A cinch to lead the National League for the third year in a row. Breaking pitch caught the corner. It's almost like Frank Pulley likes slow curveballs. Still no balls and two strikes. We're going to keep updating the game in St. Louis. And the one in Atlanta tonight. The other two games of interest in the National League as we head into the next to last weekend of the regular season. Line drive. Johnny Ray short hops it and throws him out. Good play by Johnny Ray. He picked it, as they say. That's what they call it, just picking it. Look at this. To his left, you make the play or you don't. And with time, flips over to Jason Thompson. Johnny Ray, you know, he, he has come a long way in a hurry. He knows how to defense the batters, and he seems to be in the right place at the right time. Brian Little, 0 for 3. Popped a short and grounded out to first twice. strike <laughs> you didn't think that was a strike did you no, I just like to watch Frank Pulley umpire him <laughs> and Dutch Renner they're really they're a treat to watch behind home plate Johnny Ray this time to his right two outs well he's proven that he can go to his left and to his right now somebody hit one right at him how would you like it if you were a batter or wouldn't it be funny to see Pulley call the strike and throw the right hand and maybe a hitter turned around and throw a left hand? <laughs> <laughs>
Philadelphia came up with another run, by the way, in the top of the sixth inning and now lead St. Louis 5 to 2. Cardinals batting in the bottom of the sixth. Come on, you Cardinals. <laughs> Andre Dawson 0 for 2. Walked his last time up. Oh, he went for a bad pitch. I think Andre wanted to take a crack at one that time, no matter where it was. And a final in from Atlanta. Get to that one. I know what that is. That's foul 0 and 2. What is it? 11 to 2. The Dodgers out on top. Jerry Royce won his 12th of the year. Well, Jerry's really coming on. Of course, so are the Dodgers. Their record 88 and 65 now. They are five and a half games in front with only eight games remaining. The curtain is coming down in Atlanta. Two outs and nobody on. Missed the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Roden has three strikeouts. He's also walked three. And given up three hits. Got him swinging. Pena will have to throw him out. The strikeout number four, out number three in the eighth inning. We go to the Pirate Knight. Mike Eastler, Tony Pena, Richie Hebner coming up. Frank Pulley showing you the Pirates are punching out the Expos by seven. This buds for everyone who's in the groove. It's five minutes on the upswing of five. Outside at 87 degrees under sunny blue skies. Stay tuned for my man Flash. I'm moving out of here having myself an ice cold brew. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. All you do is for you. I know. I was the first one on our block to own the brand new Nissan Stanza sedan. I love this luxurious roomy interior with power windows and four speaker stereo with cassette. So when I drove this front wheel drive beauty and checked the sticker price, I bought it. Then Jack drove it. And bought one. And Bill drove it. And bought one. Now we have three Nissan stanzas on our block. Four. Also available in two and four door hatchback. We're your Atari headquarters. This may look arcade, but it's really pole position on the 5200 Super System from Atari. The 5200 has graphics so advanced they look arcade, sound so real they sound arcade, with sophisticated keypad controllers, even an optional trackball controller for the ultimate arcade thrill. Reach for your Atari 5200 today. When it comes to the arcade experience, you'll feel right at home with Atari. Reach for Atari today and turn your living room into an arcade. Chuck Tanner checking his lineup card because we have some new people in the ball game. He's going to have to go over. There is the new pitcher, Tom Dixon, coming on to work the ninth inning. So Dixon will be the pitcher. We'll try to catch up the other changes. Who's in center field, Jerry? Gene Rufus. Is that right? Andre Dawson is no longer in the ball game. We have a new center fielder. There is Roof, number 47 in center field. Gene Roof, a switch hitter playing center field. Keep you posted on the changes. As we go to the ninth inning, here's Mike Eastler. Mike is two for four. Grand slam home run in the first inning. Got the Bucks off on the right foot tonight. The new pitcher, the right-hander, Dixon is 0-1. He's only appearing for the fourth time this year. Strike, one ball and one strike now. Breaking ball catches the corner, one and two. Dixon brought up from Wichita with the call ups on September the 1st. Just missed two and two at Wichita. That's class triple A ball. He was 12 and nine this year with a 5.33 earned run average. Mike 
Keesler drives it into the gap. That will go to the wall. The hitman on his way to second. Cruising with a double. Hit number three for Mike Eastler. He's a good contestant for the Pirate of the Game that we will be announcing at the conclusion of the ball game. The Greater Pittsburgh Area Nissan Dotson dealers donating $100 to a Pirate's favorite charity when he has selected our Pirate of the Game. So a double for Eastler here in the ninth inning. The Bucks have a dozen hits. Tony Pena, who hit a solo home run in the first inning, will be the batter. Ball gets away, and on his way to third is Mike Eastler. He's at third with nobody out here in the ninth inning. It is a wild pitch. Charge to Dixon. The ball down and hits the heel of the glove of catcher Bobby Ramos. So Dixon charged with a wild pitch. is the fifth pitcher used by Montreal. Pena slaps it foul. Barger worked two and a third innings. Check it, he worked one and a third innings. Gave up one hit, no runs. They're going into the seventh inning now at Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Phillies out in front. The score there now is six to two, Philadelphia. Here it's eight to one, Pirates. Mike Eastler with a leadoff double. He's at third with nobody out. Tony Pena trying to pick him up. And Tony just kind of flips his bat out and catches a piece of it. He gets out of play. The pitcher on the mound, Tom Dixon, came from the Mets organization in minor league trade in January of this year. He has some time in the major leagues. With the Houston Astros came up in 77 spent 78 79 with Houston and he went to the Mets Tidewater organization We're in the ninth inning again Tony just gets a piece of it and stays alive. First inning. Put Bill Verdon and company in a hole. Two balls and two strikes on Pena. Ninth inning in Olympic Stadium. Pena rolls it foul. I'd like to say a personal thank you to Jim Rooker and to Lanny for Terry for all their help this year. For those of us on the Pirate television crew, Lanny and Rook, of course, aboard for all of the games with the Pirates. Pena drives it to left field. It's deep. Reigns will watch it go. Tony Pena has just hit his second home run of the night. A two-run job here. Tony has 15 for the year. The Pirates build their lead to 10 to 1. Shot of Jim Rooker down there getting hooked up, getting ready for some comments here in the ninth inning. Pena with his second home run of the night. Third home run by the Pirates in the game. I tell you, John, the feeling down here, as soon as Tony hit it, it was almost like it was an everyday occurrence. They said, well, there goes another one. Let's take a look at the pitch, Rook. He got all of it again. Well, Tony, I'll tell you what, when he hits him and the ball is up, he drives the ball and he got something he can handle here. By the way, Dixon features of a knuckleball, and it's not really a good one, it doesn't look like. Called strike to the hack. Richie Hebner with a base hit and an RBI his last time up. He's been hit by a pitch. He's one for three. He 
Pena with 15 home runs. Rook, that's a that's a good sign as far as he's concerned. I think that shows the development of him as a batter, don't you? Well, it really is. It seems as as he's getting along in his career, he's getting better, especially after a, kind of a slow start this year. He's really come on strong. And most of his home runs too have come since the first of July. That's since he's done the damage. Hebner drives it to right field. Francona there. That's the first out in the inning. You know, I mentioned uh, about a week ago about Tony Pena, John, is that he reminds me it with of Ted Simmons, who used to be with the Cardinals, now with the Brewers, and the the similarity is that as the season gets longer, as it goes along, Simmons gets stronger, and it appears that Pena kind of falls into that same category. And even though he is caught. Started 154 games this year. That's a bunch. That's the most by a catcher since Jim Pagliaroni. Drive to left field. Reigns moving in in time to retire Dale Barrett. Two outs. Pagliaroni hits 17 home runs. Tony is 15. So Tony inching up on some records with a little over a week to go in the 1983 regular season. Here's Rick Roden. Rick is 0 for 4, flied out three times and reached on an error. Nobody on two outs. Downtown Tony Pena has done it twice tonight. corner the Pirates have three home runs a grand slam by Eastler Tony with a solo home run and a two run homer now it's two balls and two strikes. Who are scoreboard watching? The Cardinals are losing to the Phillies six to two in the seventh inning in St. Louis. And the Dodgers expanding their lead to five and a half games by beating the Atlanta Braves tonight. Roden down the line, hooking, or rather slicing into the corner. Rick with a long single. So Roden gets a base hit. have 14 in the game. The only innings they failed to get hits were the second, third, and fourth. They came up empty. Marvell Wynn has a base hit tonight. Ray has one. Parker had one. His replacement, Froble, with a hit. Jason Thompson has two hits, two RBIs. Mike Eastler with three hits in the game. Mike has four RBIs on the Grand Slam. Tony Payne with two hits, both home runs. Richie Hebner had a hit in an RBI. Dale Barra a base hit. And Rick Roden a base hit. So every Pirate in the lineup has gotten a base hit tonight. Looks like we finally get a laugh for John. It's been a while. It's a good sign, though, Rook. It really is. You know, the bats have come alive the last two or three weeks, and... It seems like the Pirates are getting hits in bunches, 10, 12, and 15. At 15 yesterday, right? Yep. And when you go down to the end of the season like this, uh, you know, pitching, again, we've talked about that, but the Pirates have been a hitting ball club, and they led the National League in hitting last year. It's kind of slumping overall as a team this year, not going, you know, you don't, I don't think they'll lead the league, but at least they're coming on and showing that they can and still will swing the bats. Well, Atlanta batting 274. The Pirates are in fourth place right now, starting tonight at 264. Could move up a point or two with this performance this evening. Swing and a miss. 29 hits in the last two games. 
How important is it in your mind to come in here and win the first game of this series? I think it's very important because you want to win two out of three to begin with. If you don't win the first game, then it's almost a must for the next two. Now, if we, the way things look tonight, uh, the Bucks in good shape, they win the first game, and you you uh, just pick it up one out of the next two. But if you win tomorrow, then you then you go for the sweep. You go for the juggler vein. Monday is an off day. Then it's the Mets for three in Pittsburgh. Wind it up in Philadelphia next weekend. Marvell went down on strikes. The inning is over, but the Pirates get two more on Tony Pena's second home run of the night. Bottom of the ninth, coming up. The pitcher spot first, then Mills and Francona. Tony will touch them all for the second time, and the Pirates have touched up the Expos 10 to 1. Truck Blitz is on at your Dotson dealers now through October 2nd. He's tackling the competition with unheard of deals on any new Nissan truck. Rough, tough trucks with the most powerful standard engine in the class. Get a great deal on a new Nissan truck while the big 84 Truck Blitz is on at your Dotson dealers. Right, fellas? That means yes. Get 8.8% truck financing now, but only through September 30th at your Greater Pittsburgh Dotson dealers. Could we see the McCulloch 610 chainsaw? But you're beavers. Oh, it's not for us. It's a birthday present for our dad. He just doesn't have the bite he used to. Well, the 610 sure has power to spare. Come on around back, boys. Gosh, it starts faster than that, too. Well, that's the electronic ignition. Gee. If you buy one now, you get a $35 rebate. Gee whiz. What's that? The chain brake for safety. Wow. Any more questions? That rebate? Yeah, it'll put us in the chips. <laughs> McCulloch with chain brake and get a $35 rebate. Bottom of the ninth coming up in Olympic Stadium, Montreal. The Pirates, 10 runs, 14 hits, no errors. Montreal, one run, three hits, and three errors in the contest. Rick Roden trying to go all the way for the seventh time this year and pick up his 12th win of the season. The Bucks have helped him out with some good offense tonight. Three home runs in the game. Mike Eastler with a grand slam in the first. The hitman with three hits in the game. And Tony Pena, a pair of home runs. One in the first and one in the ninth. Jason Thompson with a couple of hits and two RBIs. Tony had his home run stroke on tonight, right, Tony? The batter is Gene Roof, who went into center field in the top of the ninth inning. Fouls it back. Roof is a switch hitter, batting 309. That's what he batted in Triple A. He's batting 286 in Montreal. Gene Roof, one of the players joining the Montreal Expos in the latter part of the season here. Chops it off the plate. Dale Barra at second base. Can he throw him out? Yes. Good play by Bear arranging to his left to cut it off. You know what's difficult out here too, John? It's uh, because of the rain earlier and it's cold down on the field. Kind of tough. You get stiff a little bit and chilly and, and the, the moisture on the field. Those are not easy plays because you have to get to the ball at the same time make the play clean enough and the throw to first base to get the runner. So they Gene, seem to appear easy, but they're really not. You're right. So Roof, who came from the St. Louis organization a couple of weeks ago, is out number one, Brad Mills. To second base, Johnny Ray, on to Jason Thompson, two up, two down. The Bucks one out away from victory. The worst the Pirates can do tonight is stay three games behind the Phillies. The Phillies are leading six to two in the seventh inning in St. Louis. Terry Francona, 0 for 3. Terry flied to right and bounced out to Johnny Ray twice. That one caught Tony Pena. Well, I 
mentioned how cold and damp it is down here. Anytime you get a foul ball, that hurts even a little bit more, too. You kind of get numb. You know, it's like being in the dead of winter, getting hit on the end of your finger by a stick or something. Just to, It just hurts a little bit more. Ground ball to Thompson. This should do it. Jason will touch first. It's over. Game one of this weekend series goes to Rick Roden and the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Bucks win it 10 to 1. We'll be back to recap tonight's game right after this. It's super. It's super duper. Anders super duper fall twofer. What an amazing sale. Anders brand new just unpacked superb quality suits for fall. Practically a giveaway at two for 99. Not one but two suits. Two for 99. Select from hundreds of handsome sport coats. Another Anders unbelievable value. Two for 69. Stock up on slacks. Two for 39. Dress shirts. Two for nine dollars. Anders super duper fall twofer. Today, tomorrow, all week at Anders. Pontiac has created a car so new, so different. Fiero. It will fire your imagination like no other car ever built. Fiero. It's called Fiero. America's first mid-engine production car. The totally new Fiero. Only from Pontiac. We build excitement. It's all over. The Pirates put up a 10 to 1 victory over the Montreal Expos here tonight. 10 runs, 14 hits, no errors. They left nine for the Expos. One run, three hits, and three errors. They stranded five men. Rick Roden did a number on them, went all the way tonight. Pitched a three hitter, struck out four, walked three, and a final score 10 to 1. It's the first time the Pirates have scored 10 runs since they beat the Phillies 10 to 3 on August the 2nd. For Rick, it is his third career three hitter. So the Pirates win it by a score of 10 to 1. And the toughest thing we had to do tonight was select our pirate of the game. Well, as selected by our pirate broadcast crew after a split decision, it goes to Mike Eastler, the hitman with a grand slam home run in the first inning. He touched them all. He came back also later and got a single and a double. Three hits in the game for him. So the Greater Pittsburgh Area Nissan Datsun dealers will donate $100 in Mike Eastler's favorite charity, the Leukemia Foundation. Congratulations to Mike Eastler. Benefiting the Leukemia Foundation as our pirate of the game tonight. Rick Roden should maybe get half of that award. He's downstairs right now with Jim Rooker. Jim? Okay, thank you. And Rick, quite a game tonight. You had a two-hitter going for a while, but let's go back to that first inning, a long first inning, five runs scored. Well, you know, we, we seemed like we were up for half an hour, and I went down and threw a little bit, but when I went out to the mound, uh, I felt like I was loose, but it took me a couple hitters to, to get really into the flow of the game. I'm just glad that I... Uh, didn't walk little. I went 3-0 and on him and got him out. The first inning there, after giving up the, the base hit or the triple to Oliver, you really settled down and got, got things going your way. Well, Al seemed to hit me better than anybody they have, and I made a good pitch on him. I might have broke his bat, but he just hit it in the right spot, and on this turf, it, it's probably the fastest in the league, and it got in the corner, and uh, after that, you know, when you have five runs, it makes pitching so much easier, and uh, I was able to get my curve over tonight pretty good, and uh, I think that was a difference. I didn't have outstanding stuff, but... Uh, I had good movement on my fastball, and it seemed like they fouled off a lot of pitches, which meant I had good movement on it. And you said earlier that you were going to try to pitch some of the Montreal batters inside tonight. I struck out Wallach inside first inning uh, after I'd thrown him away, and I hadn't been pitching him in much, and he took it. And uh, the first time up, I, I, I struck out uh, Dawson. I threw him a couple inside, and I think I got him conscious in there and struck him out on a pitch away the next time up. Andre Dawson tonight, it looked like he chased a lot of bad pitches. He doesn't usually do that. Well, I've had pretty good success against him in the past. He's the kind of guy, it seems like if I make good pitches, I usually get him out. But, he, but when you don't, he, he's very dangerous, and that's when he hurts you. And tonight, uh, he went after a couple bad pitches, but I was ahead most of the time on him, so th that's the reason he did. How important was tonight's win, first game of the series? Well, I think they're all important. Uh, you know, we jumped out tonight five runs, and uh, hopefully that will uh, put them back a little bit. But we came out smoking tonight, and hopefully we can keep it up. Okay, Rick, again, congratulations. Now let's go back upstairs to John. Well, the Phillies are leading, Jim. It is 6-2. They're in the eighth inning in St. Louis. Philadelphia ahead of the Cardinals tonight. The Pirates are 81-73. and 73. Montreal falls to 79-75. and 75. Final totals again for the Pirates. Ten runs, 14 hits, no errors. They left nine. The Expos, one run, three hits, three errors. They stranded five. Roden, the winner, is 12-13. and 13. He gets the three-hitter. Scott Sanderson, the starter, is the loser. His record is 6-7. and seven. The Bucks put it away in the first inning. A five-run first inning. Mike Eastler 
with a grand slam home run in that inning, his 10th of the year. Then Tony Pena with a solo home run, his 14th of the season. Jason Thompson with a pair of RBI singles tonight. Then in the ninth inning, it was Tony Pena coming back with another home run, a man on base. That was his 15th of the year. Eastler gets credit for the game-winning RBI for his grand slam in the first. It is his eighth game-winning RBI.